Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at ASA. So rather new filament out there. I know a number of you have written to me and said, Joe, can you take a look at ASA for us? And I said, sure. Now, I was going to do this after the wrap-up, but the filament came in early. I had time, so decided to get it done. So with that, my standard disclaimer, not a doctor, never been a doctor, never will be a doctor, don't really want to be a doctor, not a medical doctor anyway. Anyways, so this is not an endorsement of any type of safety. This is just my opinion. So with that out of the way, let's talk about ASA a little bit. So this is a rather new plastic and a rather interesting plastic. And thank you guys for kind of pushing me to do this. I don't know if I'd have gotten around to ASA that quick. I mean, there's naturally a ton of plastics out there and I've worked with most of them. And so anyways, um, here's a piece I actually did print out of uh, ASA. I've printed a number of pieces just to mess around with it because you'll probably see a little bit more coming from me in the future. I did hose this up a little bit and I thought this was worth mentioning and this really doesn't have anything to do with air quality specifically, but I figured I'd throw this in as a freebie. So this little gap here, I had a problem feeding the filament. This stuff is pretty rigid and that's part of what I want to go back and look at. So I pulled some information on it and one of the things I think, you know, it's common knowledge, ASA is very weather resistant and again meant to uh, compete with ABS. And in this space, it says here it's about 10 times the weathering resistance and resistance to ultraviolet radiation of ABS. So uh, this stuff seems to be pretty interesting and, and uh, uh, I definitely will experiment more with this so look forward to coming. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about air quality. So I'm going to go ahead, start off ABS over here, ASA over here. And we're going to see what it does while we talk about some of the statistics down here and a few more things. So uh, first thing is, one of the big things with this whole piece I looked at is particulates. And so uh, very clear, this put off quite a few particulates, which didn't surprise me. It's um, a cousin to ABS and HIPS, and so therefore I expected it, and I got pretty much what I expected. And actually, I got a greater number than even HIPS. So uh, 58 on the uh, 10 micron stuff and 52 on the 2.5. So uh, clearly putting out a fair amount of particulate emissions, enough to where I would definitely recommend uh, an enclosure and potentially venting this to the outside. So I'm definitely going to vent it because when we start talking about this this much particulate release, that's quite a bit, and especially if you're going to print a lot. Again, my opinion. Uh, with that being said, we did see some VOCs in this, but the one thing that was very interesting with this versus hips is I had no smell, no sweet smell. As we talked before in a prior episode, and as Goth Boy UK put, uh, you know, shared with me that sweet smell is a styrene smell, bad stuff, styrene, bad stuff. And this is what surprised me because obviously styrene is in its name. I'm not going to try pronouncing the chemical name because everybody's going to write down below and try correcting me. So again, I'll put the chemical name below, but you can see obviously styrene is, is a key component of this material. Uh, the other thing I went and did is I looked at the MSDS sheet or the SDS sheet, I think as they're now called, and uh, for thermal decomposition, i.e. if this burns, um, I was very interested to see kind of, th there's not a lot of stuff. So you have some phenols, you have uh, hydrogen cyanide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, pretty much stuff I would expect. I don't see any styrene release as part of this. So, uh, you know, again, on the Wikipedia, they had quite a bit about how this is bonded and they've created a plastic alloy and all this other kind of stuff. I won't go into all that and bore you, but I, obviously the way that this is chemically compounded is, uh, uh, while very close to ABS, very much different. And so I find with that, it's uh, a pretty interesting filament to work with. And um, I feel personally a little bit more comfortable with this than probably even hips. So even though I did outgas more, one of the clear things, um, you, you know, with this is, is, again, I didn't get the sweet smell. And one of the pieces that I really want to point out here is when we look across here at the, the VOCs, I don't overly trust that this is capturing the full gambit of the VOCs. That's why, again, I really focused on the particulate counts through here. And this does have a high particulate count, so I still would definitely vent it. But, you know, obviously, 
and doesn't have the VOCs or the formaldehydes that I saw in the ABS. So, anyways, I'm giving this kind of a thumbs up. Um, in, I'm thinking about actually switching from, you know, because I moved to hips because I didn't like, a, you know, ABS. I'm thinking about actually moving from hips to this. Even though the particulate release was higher, I did not have that sweet smell. And to me, that's very important because, you know, again, uh, actually there was very little smell of anything that I could smell. Now, again, I, I want to be very careful because in prior videos I've been been pointing this out. Just because it doesn't smell doesn't mean there isn't something bad there. And obviously the particulate count, which is very high, shows there is something there. Uh, but when I go back and I look at the MSDS sheet or the SDS sheet, uh, and I look at the thermal you know, decomposition, obviously if this is burning, if this is open flame, i.e. oxidizing by a flame, then this is the stuff. And, and the worst, actually here in my opinion, is, is hydrogen cyanide. And, but we're not burning it, we're simply melting it. So again, the emissions are probably more so going to be uh, probably less of a breakdown. Again, this is my opinion, not a chemical opinion. So Gothboy and others out there who know more than I, please comment if, if you see this differently because I'd really enjoy reading your comments. Um, this does, I think, appear to be a bit more stable plastic uh, than HIPS or ABS, even though with the higher emissions. So uh, you guys asked for it. Here it is. I, I'm pretty impressed with this. I'm pretty impressed with uh, ASA. I'm definitely going to work some more with it. I'm going to experiment some more with it. Uh, look forward to your comments below about it. Uh, I think I printed this around 250 with 100 bed temperature. Adhesion to the P. I used a uh, PEI bed. Worked very well for my tests. Um, the temperature worked well. But again, one of the things I've noticed is the rigidity of the filament sometimes has a problem feeding, especially a newer spool. It wanted to kind of wind itself up, and that's where this problem... Luckily, I caught it in time uh, before it became too big of a problem, but, you know, you can see it ran a little bit short here. So, anyways, uh, hopefully you found this interesting and of value. And again, the next episode, I'll do the total wrap-up. I'm going to look at a little bit of the statistics of this, give you my final opinions on all this stuff, and... Uh, Hopefully wrap this up until we find some other things to experiment with in this space. So uh, until then, the swag shop is going to be up there. As always, hit me up in comments below. Love reading your guys' comments. And then subscribe is going to be over there. I put out regular content. And so hope to see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.